Hi there, welcome back to my channel. This is a video about moment equations or moment functions. We have a cantilever beam and the cantilever beam is carrying a load that I usually refer to as a tricky triangle. Um, but we basically we have a linear function with a peak intensity over here at the fixed support and at the free end we have a load intensity of zero so we can think about that as a linear function that tells you how that linear decrease happens over the length of the beam and um, we've been given an origin in this problem and whenever you're you know asked to do one of these problems and an origin is given to you you're kind of stuck with it. You got to use it because, you know, whoever wants you to do this work is expecting an answer that is sensitive to that origin. If you change the origin, you'll get a completely different answer. Okay. Um, so we're going to go with this origin and then measure distance X away from that origin. So we'll end up cutting through our beam right here. And we'll get to make a decision about the left side versus the right side here in a minute. Um, but I did want to mention while I'm talking about origins is that if you are working this problem on your own and you have the ability to set your own origin, look at this one. Boy, is this one a beauty. If you don't see why right now, I think you'll realize a little bit later on. I'll try to remember to come back to that late in the video. All right, but for now, let's just start. Let's stick with the origin that is given. And I'm going to go ahead and make two free bodies. And we want to talk about which one is going to be easier. So here is one. I'm going to detach from the fixed support at A and cut at distance X from the support. Okay, so there's one free body. Clean that one up just a little bit. I need to put this in equilibrium. So things that I would need to include would be my vertical reaction here. Uh, that's the area under the curve. So W naught L over two. You know, base of the triangle is L, height of the triangle is W naught, one half is because it's a triangle, not a rectangle. And I'd also need my reaction. I'm gonna put little hatch marks through these vectors to show that they're both reactions. That would be the W naught L over two times a distance of L over three. We're not really work, focusing on reactions in this video. So, you know, feel free to work this out on your own on scratch paper. You'll get W naught L squared over six is the moment reaction of this fixed support. Um, and then at the cut, yeah, we would wanna get a black pen for that. And we would wanna cut there and then my positive shear force would go down and my positive bending moment for the positive X plane would go counterclockwise as shown. All right, so that's one option. And that free body's kind of got a lot of stuff going on, right? And we haven't even done this. So I'm going to turn down the volume layer on top, zoom in a little bit. We didn't even do this part where we got to figure out this area under the curve. So we have this rectangle and that would turn into, you know, one equivalent force F sub R and maybe F sub R sub one. And then we would have a separate rect uh, triangle, a separate triangle. So we would then need to get this area and put a resultant force at the third point of that triangle. So maybe right there, we could call that F sub R sub two. So I'll just kind of make that one fade away a little bit and maybe just kind of let these kind of peacefully coexist so we got a lot of stuff going on on that free body probably worth a, ch a check to look at the other side see if we can save ourselves a little bit of work so let's pan over let's try the other free body here i'm just gonna grab this much Cut it distance X from the fixed support, copy merged, edit paste, and I'll put that one here. All right. We don't need any of this. And we also don't even need this. So I'm going to get this out of the way as well. 
Okay, it's looking pretty good. Okay, what do we need on this free body? Well, we start to see that our, our job gets a little bit easier here because do we need any reactions on the free end? And of course not, it's unsupported. There's nothing but air underneath that and air cannot push back, at least not in this class. Um, let's cut through our fibers here and we do need to put this in equilibrium. I'm going to move this over a little bit just so we can see it next to the one we've already done. Um, but look here, my positive shear force goes upward because I'm on the negative x face. Okay, so we'll get this into the mix. And then my positive bending moment goes clockwise because I'm on the negative x face. And just keep in mind that, you know, this and this is the same thing. They're just going in different directions because of our sign convention. Same thing with the two shear forces, that and that. They're exactly the same thing. They're just going in different directions because of our sign convention. Now, just as we did before, we will need to take the area under the curve. So we've got just a triangle. That's going to make this one a little bit easier. So we've got a triangular distribution that looks like that. So we'll need to figure out what the resultant force is. And I'll put it right there. Okay. And we can replace that triangular load with its resultant force. So hopefully you can look at these two free bodies and think to yourself, yeah, I think I'm going to work smarter, not harder, and I'm going to deal with the one on the right. Now, if you want to have a challenge or, um, you know, have some fun, <laughs> I guess we have different ideas of what fun is, um, you're welcome to play with this free body. You'll get the exact same results. So that's a good challenge. Follow-up question if you really, really want to master this material and want extra practice after the video is over. All right, I'm going to turn those layers off, get rid of those. Um, let's go back to this layer. All right. Now, probably the part of this problem in all of its parts that tends to give students uh, the most trouble. And that is what this symbol means, right? So this is going to have units of force per distance. So load in intensity force per distance. Um, this also has units of force per distance, but this is a value while this is a function, okay? And I think the way that I would prefer to explain this is just to kind of use some numbers. So just kind of go with me here. Um, go with me here and Trust me when I say that this is usually what's causing problems on these types of problems. So if I just were to give this a value, let's just say four, so four kilonewtons per meter, that tells me what's happening here. And I'm also going to say that my length is four meters. You should be able to deduce that at that point, I've got four. At the midpoint, I've got two. At the end, I've got one. And at the quarter points, let me make two let me move it over so it's not kind of living at the same place as the, I don't want to make that misleading, so I'll put the two right there. Um, yeah, so you can figure out, oh, well, that value is three, this value is one. So in other words, the load intensity at the cut itself is a, is a function of x, right? So we're going to want to figure out what that is on our diagram here. And I'm going to call this value, it's kind of a weird notation, but I'm going to call it W cut. What is the load intensity force per distance at distance x? And over the years, I've seen students solve this little part of the problem in some really interesting ways. I'm going to explain the way that I think is easiest to understand. And it's all about similar triangles. So do you see this triangle and this triangle are similar? You know that because they share the same 
angle, they share the same angle, whatever this is, I'll just call it an alpha. Um, so the triangles are similar. And whenever you have similar triangles, you can just use ratios to solve for unknowns. So I am going to do this one. I'm going to say that what I want, W cut, is to the base of that triangle. And that before I get too far ahead of myself, I need to add that to my free body. Okay. All right. So what is the length of my free body? Well, it's not X because X measures here, but rather we're going to need to do this distance, which is defined as L minus X. Okay. So that's the length of our free body is L minus X. Okay, and now I'm kind of back to what I was doing before with the similar triangles. And before I do it in math, actually, I'll just do it kind of verbally. Great, I want this is to that as this is to that. That's all I'm doing. So in math, that would mean W cut is to L minus X as W not is to L. And now at this point, I can just rearrange that to solve for what W at the cut is. It's equal to W naught times L minus X divided by L. And I'm going to add that. I think I'm just going to rewrite this so I can do it a little bit smaller. forgot that I left the screen one here. Let me clean it up real quick. Yeah, close enough. Okay, so put my shear force back in. Sorry about that little shear force. This intensity right here that we're going to call W cut, that is equal to, we just solved it, W naught over L times L minus X in the numerator. And you might be tempted at this point to expand that, right? To do like W naught minus W naught times X, right? Um, there is a strategic advantage in this problem to kind of leaving the L minus X term intact as long as you possibly can. Um, so we're going to try to do that. So I'm just going to leave it in this form here. Okay. We are moving right along and at this point, let's see, I'm going to remove that. We're not going to need that again. And This little piece is going to be very important to us. So I'll zoom in even, even a little bit tighter there. All right, we are ready to rock. OK, what we want to do is convert that area under the triangle into an equivalent concentrated force. So I'll draw it right there. I'll label that F sub R. And it's equal to the area under the curve. At this point, we can kind of go on autopilot. We've done this with some frequency. We just want the height of the triangle. That's W naught over L times L minus X times the base of the triangle. That's L minus X. So I'm going to square that. And then in the denominator, I want to put that two down there since it's the area of a triangle and not of a rectangle. So all that expression is, is base height over two using this as the height and that is the base. Okay, once we have done that, I am going to go back into this picture and just clean some stuff up. So as soon as I've got that resultant force, I don't even need, you know, I don't need any of this stuff. I can make this go away because I'm replacing it with the resultant force. None of this is required anymore. Just kind of clean this up a little bit. Okay, now our free body looks a little 
easier to manage. Okay. We do need to get a length between the cut plane and that resultant force. And it's the third point of the distance. So this is going to be L minus X quantity divided by three, the third point on the heavy side of that triangle. All right, we are ready to do our moment summation. So we are going to do summation of moments about the cut is equal to zero counterclockwise will be positive. That is our sign convention. The axis that we're going to use is this one. I'll color it in green right there. And then I will circle it in black. Okay, so that axis coming out of the page at you right now is what we are summing about. We're not summing about X. We're not summing about Y. We're summing about Z. Um, how many terms are we going to have in this moment summation? Just two. One, two. First term, M sub X. Does that one get a positive sign or a negative sign? I'm just comparing that vector to this sign convention. And so I'll give that one a negative sign for going clockwise. Next term, my resultant force. And let's just write it symbolically first, and then we'll plug in here in a second. So we've got our resultant force. My distance term is L minus X over 3. And direction for that one, well, that force tends to rotate the body clockwise about that green dot. And that one we call a negative. Set all that equal to 0. I'm going to put do a little bit of algebra. And now I'm ready to plug in for F sub R. So my minus sign, W naught over 2L times L minus X squared. So I've got a squared term times another term. So I'm going to go ahead and make that one cubed. And down here in the denominator, I've got the product of a 2 and a 3. So I'm just going to write that as a six like that. OK. Oftentimes, you do want to expand these polynomials. This one is so simple in this form that this is the typical way that you would see an answer expressed for this particular problem. So I am OK with you leaving your answer in this form. If you would like to expand it and turn it into a polynomial, um, that is also fine. It's a little bit cleaner this way. And that's all there is to it. Just as a reminder, if you are having so much fun with this, and I know you are, um, try this one, try this one. Follow all the same rules. See if you can get these resultant forces correct their distance. And if you can get the same value for M of X as you did using the other side, I will declare you the grand hero of mechanics of materials for your lifetime. So give that one a shot if you got extra time and or if you need extra practice. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.